The next thing that we're going to look at is the second part of F.2 or section 7.2. We're going to talk about dividing rational expressions. In order to divide rational expressions, we need to be comfortable with our rules for dividing fractions, i.e. copy dot flip. We also need to be able to factor polynomials because we will be, again, canceling common factors. All right, so our procedure in order to divide rational expressions, we're going to start by using our rule for dividing fractions. So we want to copy dot flip. We're going to copy the first fraction, change our op operation to multiplication, and flip the second fraction. From there, we're going to do what we did in the previous presentation. We want to factor each numerator and denominator completely. We're going to cancel factors that appear in a numerator and a denominator. Remember that they can be in same fractions or different fractions. And then we want to multiply straight across. Remember that, again, we can leave in factored form, so we do not need to FOIL or distribute. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some examples. For example A, we have x squared minus 2x minus 8 over x squared minus 9 divided by x minus 4 over x plus 3. My first step is going to be copy dot flip, so I'm going to leave my first fraction the same. Dot flip the second fraction we get x plus 3 over x minus 4. Okay, if we go ahead and do our factorizations, this one's pretty easy, so I'm going to go ahead and just factor each one. On the left, x squared minus 2x minus 8. x squared is x and x. Things that multiply to 8 are 4 and 2. We have that we want to multiply to negative 8, which tells me different signs. We want to combine to negative 2, which tells me I want my larger quantity to be negative. So we should get x minus 4 and x plus 2. The denominator is difference of squares. So x squared is going to be x and x. Things that multiply to 9 is 3 and 3, and we have different signs. On the right, I can't do anything here, nothing factors, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it the same. We have x plus 3 over x minus 4. We've now factored everything, so my next step is to cancel common factors. What can I cancel? Well, I have an x minus 4 in the top and a bottom. I also have an x plus 3 in a top and a bottom. What is left over? On the top, I am left with x plus 2. On the bottom, I am left with x minus 3. And we're done. All right, let's look at example B. All right, so looking at example B, the first thing I want to do is copy dot flip. I get 2y squared minus 128 over y squared plus 16y plus 64 dot we're going to flip the second fraction we get 3y squared plus 30y plus 48 over y squared minus 6y minus 16 
The next thing I want to do is I want to check for any greatest common factors. We do have greatest common factors in the top right. Both of these numbers are divisible by 2. We also have greatest common factor in the top left. All of these numbers are divisible by 3. So let's go ahead and factor. So on the top left, I can factor out a 2. If we divide each term by 2, we should get y squared minus 64. Bottom will stay the same. The top right, as I said, we can factor out a 3. And if I divide each term by 3, I should get y squared. 30y divided by 3 is 10y. And 48 divided by 3 is 16. We'll leave the bottom the same. All of these are relatively easy to factor. We don't have um, any leading coefficients that are not 1 anymore. So let's go ahead and start our factorings. Top left, we still have our 2 on the outside. The inside thing is difference of squares. So I get y and y. 64 is 8 times 8 and we have different signs. The bottom, this is actually a perfect square trinomial. y squared is y and y. 64 is 8 and 8. 8 and 8 combined to give me 16. Our signs, we have, we have multiplying to a positive 64, so they are the same. We have that they are combining to a positive 16, so they are both positive. All right, let's go ahead and move over to the right side. We still have our 3 on the outside. And then now if we go ahead and factor this, we have y squared is y and y. Things that multiply to 16 and combine to 10 is going to be 2 and 8. Again, we are multiplying to a positive 16, which tells me same signs. We are combining to a positive 10, which tells me they are both positive. So we get 3 times y plus 2 times y plus 8. All right, let's go ahead and factor the bottom now. y squared is y and y. Things that multiply to 16 and subtract to 6, we're going to go with 8 and 2. And then now what do we have for our signs? We have we are multiplying to a negative 16, which tells me different signs. We are combining to a negative 6, which tells me my larger number is negative. So we want negative 8 and positive 2. Okay, so now let's go ahead and cancel. So what can we cancel? Well, I see a y minus 8 on the top and bottom. I see a y plus 8 on the top and bottom. I see a y plus 2, and I also see another y plus 8. So now what do we have left over? On top, I have 2 times 3. Um, this one we are going to go ahead and multiply. 2 times 3 is 6. Our denominator, since everything cancels out, it is technically a 1. And 6 divided by 1 is equal to 6. So that was a very long problem just to get to an answer of 6.
All right, let's look at one more example. And let's step up the difficulty level a little bit more. All right, for example C, I don't want to read this out because it's going to take me forever. But I'm going to start by doing my copy dot flip. So the inside of my parentheses, this whole thing, since it is multiplication, I'm going to go ahead and just bring the whole thing down. We get 6y squared plus 31y plus 18 over 3y squared minus 20y plus 12 times 2y squared minus 15y plus 18 over 6y squared plus 35y plus 36. And now I want to flip my last fraction because it is a division. So we're going to change it to a dot and we flip the second one or flip the last one. So we get 9y squared plus 15y plus 4 over 2y squared minus 13y plus 15. Okay, so now I want to know where do I want to start with my factorings. So for me personally, the easiest thing to factor here is probably going to be the 2y squared minus 13y plus 15. So I'm going to start with that one. So starting with the bottom right, I have 2y squared is 2y and y. Things that multiply to 15 are 5 and 3. In order to get to 13, I think I want to multiply 2y by 5. That gets me to 10. If I combine that with 3, I do get 13. We do have for this one, multiplying to a positive 15 tells me same signs. They are both negative. All right, let's go ahead and see what we can do this. So um, this, neither one of these factors is going to work for the top left. Notice here we have same signs multiplying to positive 18, but we have that they are both going to be positive. So it's not going to work there. Same thing applies to 9y squared plus 15y plus 4. We have multiplying to a positive 4, same signs, combining to a positive 15, they are both going to be positive. So since we have negative signs on both of these, the only thing that we can maybe do is the 2y squared minus 15y plus 18. Now, y minus 5 is not a factor of the middle because 5 does not go into 18. On the other hand, 2y minus 3 could be a factor. 2y squared is divisible by 2y. 18 is divisible by 3. And we do have same signs, both are negative. So I'm going to say, let's try 2y minus 3 in the middle on top. So now, 2y squared, what multiplies to 2y squared? We have 2y and y. What multiplies to positive 18? We get negative 3 and negative 6. If you do a quick check outsides, you get 2y times negative 6 is negative 12y. Insides, you get negative 3 times y is negative 3y. And negative 12 and negative 3 do combine to give you negative 15. Okay, 
let's see if we can go ahead and keep the cycle going. So um, that takes care of my 2y minus 3. Let's see if we can use y minus 6 to factor something else. So y minus 6 is not going to be a factor of the bottom middle. We have multiplying to positive 36 tells me same signs, but in this case they are both positive. So let's try the 3y squared minus 20y plus 12. Can y minus 6 be a factor of this? And the answer is yes. So I'm going to go ahead and let y minus 6 be my first factor. 3y squared is y times 3y. And 12 is equal to negative 6 times negative 2. If we do a quick check, we get outsides is negative 2y, insides is negative 18y, and negative 2y and negative 18y do combine to give us negative 20y. Okay, now the 3y minus 2, I cannot use it to factor any of my other, any of my remaining tops because of the same signs and we want positives. So we're going to have to start over again. So now where do I want to start? For me personally, the easiest one I see to factor is the 9y squared plus 15y plus 4. So that's what I'm going to start with. So 9y squared breaks down to, I think it's going to be 3y and 3y. Things that multiply to 4, we have 1 and 4, 2 and 2. I do not want to use 2 and 2 because I want an odd number in the middle, so I do not want to pick a pair of even numbers. So I'm going to go with 1 and 4. We do have multiplying to a positive 4 tells me same signs. Since we are combining to a positive 15, I know that they are both positive. Okay, so let's see if we can use that to factor the bottom middle. 3y plus 1 isn't really saying anything to me. It's not screaming it out to me. And so I think I want to work with 3y plus 4 since we are looking at a 36. So I'm going to try a factor of 3y plus 4. So 6y squared, this is going to break down to 3y and 2y. 36 breaks down to 4 times 9. We have same signs, both are positive. And so we get our other factor is going to be 2y plus 9. If we do a quick check, outsides we get 27y, insides we get 8y, and 27y plus 8y is equal to 35y. So we are good there. Okay, so right now we have that was our 3y plus 4. So now let's see if we can use the 2y plus 9 to factor something else. So the last thing we need is the top left. Right now, 2y plus 9 can be a factor, so I'm just going to say let's assume it is. So 6y squared breaks down to 2y and 3y. 18 breaks down to 9 and positive 2. If we do a quick check, outsides we get 4y, insides we get 27y. 4y and 27y do combine to give us 31y. So this is the correct factoring. All right, so now we are to our cancel step. So let's see what we can cancel. Um, we had 2y plus 9. Our 3y plus 2 has nothing to cancel with on the bottom. 
2y minus 3, we have that cancels. Our y minus 6 cancels. And our 3y plus 4 cancels. All right, so what do we have left over? I believe that takes care of all of them. So on top we have 3y plus 2 and 3y plus 1. On bottom we have 3y minus 2 and y minus 5. And so that will be our final answer. We can leave this in factored form. We are done. To check that you understand what was presented in this presentation, please go ahead and try the following problems on your own. The answers will be available on the next slide.